This is a Royal Master Classic actual play set in Terry K. Anthra's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items, and characters on World Anvil, where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. You'll find links to that and other forms of media for our sessions as well as an index of this episode in the description. This episode has jump cuts to keep the runtime down. Previously, the demon possessed Silk is being hunted by the party. Fighting their way through more childlike demons and their taller whip wielding wranglers, they tracked her to a ruined tower with the help of the blue sprite, one of Mab's servants maybe. Ugnan used a herb to speed himself up to Silk's location, but was unable to hold her with a spell, taking a shock bolt from her for his troubles. Injured, the healer was forced only to watch as Victor charged off into the dark mist after the fleeing, but also bleeding elf. So, Victoria, you are some way distant from the rest of the party. You know they're a little bit behind you. They're probably just out of sight. Remember, your vision is only about 60 feet. There are five of you now together. Silk has run off into the heart, well, into the northern part of Tarek Neb, an area that you've not explored. Wasn't I being led want... by the blue sprite thing? Yes. The blue sprite was leading you or led you to the tower, but the blue sprite has now vanished. Oh, okay. And so Snarkle but... says to the group, um, who's carrying who's carrying the the rod and who's carrying the stone? So the Ashing Stone is with Cherry, nice and safe. Ugnan's got the other portal rod. Okay. Snark and Snarkle says, what happened to that other that other elf? That sea sea elf. <laughs> I uh, am enjoying the accent. Awesome yeah, same, same. role play, buddy. It's, evol it's, it's, it's evolving. It's evolving. Yeah. It's a work, it's it's good, a work in progress. Hey, don't worry. Ugnan's okay. accent, as we know, changes every single session. So. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, don't get too upset. Cran scratches his head and goes, what elf is he talking about? He's actually been replaced by a doppelganger seven sessions ago, and nobody's <laughs> noticed it yet. Yeah, yeah so Numel, Numel. Numel, I think, is with Cherry. Yeah, back in the back palace. In the palace. Yeah. They're like shells of people. Also, when we, when we left Acor, wasn't he in a pretty... That's right. He's got a hair, an ear missing. I'll remove. Oh yeah, uh, Cherry. Yeah. So, a uh, yeah. So, Acor actually lost an ear, which would, if we're going to do role master in true gritty, uh, whatever, is going to give him a penalty. I think of minus ten to his perception. How but does he hear? We oh god. <laughs> Weirdly, terrible. No, it's well, actually a minor. It's actually can be fixed by a minor ear repair. It says including ear loss, which is amazing, but. It means it'll take one to ten hours to regenerate, so I'm going to take care of that. Okay. Oh, you can have a cute little tiny ear for in like the first five hours. Yeah, well, Ugly is You're unfortunate. You're thinking Deadpool, aren't you? Okay. I'm thinking of Deadpool. Yes. <laughs> right, so he'll cast that. Okay. And hasn't fumbled. Good. Let's have you... You'd probably group around the tower to decide what to do next. Um, if I show you the... Give you an overview of the city again... That circle that you can see is where you found uh, the body that was possessed. And you're currently somewhere around here. You're not too battered and bruised. Silk has vanished. Do you wish to, you know she's possessed. Do you wish to give up on her and hope she's all right? Do you want to now yes, forget, comb forget the city the and look for her? Or do you want to do something else? Forget the elf. Let, let's Cran, go and Cran, find the, the rod. Cran looks over at Ugnan and go, fuck it, we can't leave her. Poor cow's been hounded by those things since she was a young girl. And that's like 2,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but how do we do it now? We've got a whole city to look through. At least we've had a little guide now, and that one's buggered off. By the way, he's doing this as he's binding uh, Acor. So Acor, you're unfortunately going to take nine more hits as you bleed, but then it'll stop. But it'll take an hour before <laughs> anything happens. Um, yeah, no, but it's Silk. She saved our lives many an occasion. She doesn't want to be found. It'll when be I was a, a Marine, it was chase. always leave no man behind. Fortunately, she's a woman, so I guess we could just ditch her and run off. <laughs> oh, yeah, bastard. Which, which mercenary company was that? Oh, you know, most of the one I've read in that is Selkai, the White Wolves. Never heard of them. Yeah, we weren't very good. 
<laughs> so Cran, don't know whether it would affect you or not, but Silk did run off saying that it was for the best and that she couldn't control herself any longer. Let's see if, if we can spot her as we're walking around. We'll do our level best to get her sorted out. If that black smoke fucker went into her and he's controlled her, I don't think we've got hope in hell. Even Ugnan wouldn't like that in his body. And he's had all sorts in there. The, the obvious arena that you can see seems to be on a rocky spur in a bay that has been walled in. Um, and it's not too far from that outdoor courtyard that had been created for a bizarre reason. As you head off towards the, it's roughly sort of the northeast of that large and rather peculiar courtyard, you can see that there's a walkway that leads from the mainland of the city onto this strange, it looks like um, a white granite lump of rock which sits proudly thrusting out of the water. What's perhaps a bit of a relief is that you can see that as the walkway leaves the city, a lot of the black murk is dissipating. Your vision is much better. So you can see the walkway quite clearly. It's about 120 feet long um, and there's a stone bridge, quite an um, impressive stone bridge that links mainland to this uh, curious rock outcropping. There's a large high stone ring, a uh, walled ring that goes around the um, seating that forms the outer part of this arena. Your only entrance point into the arena is obviously to go across this bridge and to go under what looks like a couple of arches, which you're assuming will lead you to some access points, maybe some steps, and also maybe into the centre of the arena properly. On so, either Stuart, side... Is this, yeah. is, this, is this like, you know, just so I can visualise this, is this, is this something big like, say, the Colosseum in Rome, or is it yeah. a lot smaller? Yeah. Is it? Um, oh, no, it's smaller about? than the Colosseum in Rome. So you're looking at something which is about maybe 200 feet across. So smaller, yep. I would say, than the Colosseum, but still impressive in its own right. And it almost completely fills the rock outcropping. The stone bridge itself leads slightly down towards the rocky island. And you can clearly see that there are two arches for you to go under um, before you can actually get into maybe the heart of the arena itself. On either side of the um, get of the pathway, the bridge, there are two enormous statues. Both look vaguely reptilian. Both have been quite crudely carved from local stone, and the statues stare out motionlessly in toward towards the heart of the city. The statues themselves are probably about twenty feet tall. The lizard men seem to be seated on what look like stone benches. They don't carry any weapons. Their hands are on their knees. They're massively muscled and with almost a slight grin to their faces. I say faces, they've, they've got more, almost like a, a snub-nosed crocodilian sort of aspect to their faces. You can see some rather sharp teeth um, present in these statues as well. The statues are old and worn. Vines have, begin, have begun to crawl up them as well. So it doesn't look like they're going to animate at all. They don't seem to offer any obvious threat. <laughs> exactly. Cranic will, will take one to go for shoulder, everyone will shrug, and then just walk over the bridge. Whoa, 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 whoa. what about them vines? You don't know about them vines. It's a fucking plant. All I do is like make tea out of those, and that makes me feel better. <laughs> as long as you've got some of that stuff left, so it'll be fine. And you make beer out yeah. of them, don't you, as well? Plants. Ogden shrugs, then yeah. scratches his tiny little ear. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, it wasn't any. Thankfully, it wasn't a worse injury. Uh, so Cran is quite happy noticed. to lead him. 
yes. Brown is quite happy to lead the way. Victoria is not too far behind as usual. Mm -hmm. uh, Snarkle and Acor tend to stay quite close together. And Ugnan sort of, um, as as is his one, wait for me. Oh, bloody hell. Me back. Oh, hold on a minute. Where are me wood binds? <laughs> he is going to avoid those vines, though. He doesn't trust them. Okay. So the vines themselves uh, crawl and wind their way around the statues. As you pass between the statues, you get a faint, uneasy feeling of being watched. But as you glance back, the statues haven't moved at all. Cran, uh, leading the way, you can see that um, there is a, an impressive walkway that goes over your heads. Um, obviously, this is uh, a means of um, going all the way around the arena and getting to the seats. Um, what you can also see is oops, just on either side of the arch, you can see some stone steps that lead up, if you nice. can see what I mean. So yep. as you go in, you can then go up onto this outer ring, and that will give you access to the, to the stone steps. Do they have like a circular ticket barrier? You can only go in one way. Um, no, but there is somebody selling really bad badges, um, yeah. scarves, <laughs> and um, he's got what are clearly some knockoff Taiwanese uh, shirts that if you show them a match, will burst into flames and incinerate your house. Bovril and meat pies, obviously. <laughs> no, now you're showing your age, and I'm going to dock you some experience points. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I so think we should go up to the up to the top and have a look. Okay, Cran, which way do you want to go? Left up or there. right? Okay. Yeah, we walk up the stairs. Oh, that's quite nice up here. Let's see. So actually, you'd be able to see, because there's less murk here, you'd probably be able to, to see quite a bit of the arena itself. So you can see, Cran, that as you walk around, there are various gaps in the walls for you to start um stepping down all of the stone tearing that you can see leads all the way down to a low inner wall on the other side of the inner wall you can see um a dusty sandy interior mm -hmm. in the very center you can dimly make out um that the floor pattern changes slightly and it looks like there's an inner floor pattern that is made of stone not sand some sort of white stone um, that you've seen before. You're about 40 to 50 feet um, above the rocky outcrop that then leads to the sea and about the same to the uh, central sandy arena floor. Nothing just, seems to be moving. Let's walk around the edge and get, a, get the lower land. Snarkle okay. turns to Ugnan and he says, hey, you. Old man, what did they fight in this arena? You seem to know about history. Uh, does he know that? Although he's going to assume, well, probably each other. No, but you could you could guess. I mean, arena combat is common in lots of societies and organisations, and you've done your fair your own fair amount of sort of medical healing um, with gladiators. So you can make your way round most of the area until you get to what looks like. Um, Cran, if I just move some of you, you'll excuse the liberties as I move you. Um, Cran, you've reached kind of at a dead end, and the only way that you can now proceed is to actually go down into the seated area. It looks as if there's some sort of uh, entrance into the bay. So there's a stone wall in front of you. If you lift yourself up, you can look 40 foot down onto another sandy area, and you can see there's a portcullis to the right of you which would lead into the water, and there's a portcullis to the left, which would lead into the arena. God knows why, why, they've, why they've opened the arena up to the sea like this. The water actually be, is lapsed up almost to the, to the stone um, in some point. So the outcrop itself, if there was a high tide or um, some sort of flood, then actually the arena floor could get um, covered with water, probably not to any great depth. 
What do you reckon? They ship, shipped in animals. Ugden puts his hand up. Or, or, shh, flood, or flooded it. Ugden says, shh, 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 get down a second. And he whispers, right. like, what's, what could come in through the water that needs to port colours that you'd put in an arena to fight? Something fucking big looking at the size of that. Some kind of sea monster. And this whole bay's got a wall around it. So I'm just saying, I mean, I don't know, years and years have passed, but it's times as we know it's frozen here. I'm just saying we, we might have to be a bit careful of what's in the water. Yeah, let's avoid that, shall we? <laughs> Is the portcullis closed around the edge of the arena? Along Both portcullises are up. I'm just going to throw this stone in the water. I'm not joking. No, let's not, let's do, let's <laughs> not do that. No, but he's going to have a good look at the water around here and see if there's anything that he can see swirling Is there a control? shapes. Sorry, control lever. Is there a control, a control lever for the portcullis or like a, something to operate it? You can see a massive winch system, which is down by the sandstone floor. So you'd have to stand down in that sandy area um, between the stands to operate the winch mechanism. Um, All right. The Cranel, Stuart, itself is the, looks impressively thick. Is the yes. sandstone floor um, at, at a lower level than sea level? I mean, is there some... No some obvious no. mechanism to flood the arena no no the sand floor which um okay so uh cran without too much hesitation uh walks down to investigate the portcullis itself is is massive cran um the bars themselves are sort of fully two inches thick um, and the chain mechanism on the winch is is an impressive piece of engineering the water itself just touches the top of the stone. What I'm Does looking it look at... rusted solid, the chain, or is it still look the... like it might be in working order? No, the chain is in working order. So the stone outcrop is about three, maybe four inches above the water of the bay, which at this distance, Cran... You remember the name of the waters that surround Tarek Never known as the Boiling Sea, and the waters are quite warm. And there is actually a mist that is rising off the waters. There's also a breeze that's coming in, and that has mercifully um, kept that black murk that fills the rest of the city away from this out rock outcrop. In the centre of the arena, now you've had a chance to look around, you can see that there is a perfectly spherical uh wheel shaped circular shape stone floor um it's slightly higher by maybe inches than the sand around it across from you at about um 10 o'clock there's a raised area of seven marble thrones so these could have been vip seats very, very close to the action. Well, I'm going to do whatever I can to investigate how to close the bars just in case they're, we're right with our hunter. There may be something nasty lurking okay. in the water. Cran, give me a perception roll. Okay, the waters are quite calm and placid. Uh, they're a very rich blue, deep blue, but nothing seems to be moving around in them. If there's any sort of sea creature or anything like that that you were worried about, uh, it's probably long gone. Mechanism itself, yeah, you can see that actually you'd have to actually use the what seems to be a, a large sort of wheel set into the wall to lower the portcullis. If you're going to lower it carefully, though, it's going to take sort of two or three of you with a bit of muscle to do it slowly. Otherwise, as you start to, you suspect that as you start to kind of try and lower the portcullis, its weight will bring it crashing to the floor. Now, it probably won't break anything, but boy, it will make a lot of noise. Oi, hey, Victoria, uh, Acor, Snuckle. Oh, uh, I can if you want to come and supervise as well. <laughs> Do you want to come down here and give us a hand with this lever so we can lower this portcullis? I think I've worked out how it operates. Okay. He, he's still watching the water. Yes. Okay. Uh, Acor and Victoria, are you remaining sort of higher up? At the moment, it's just Snarkle and Cran that are at ground level. Yeah, I'm not to keep an eye. Okay. I'm going to um, prepare a hold yeah. kind. Okay. Sorry, Sarissa says there's no such thing as sea monsters, so don't worry. Uh, they're all like old 
old tales from drunk sea captains and stuff. Don't worry about it. It'll be, it'll be fine. It's like big fish occasionally. That's about it. Okay. Uh, so I want one of you, either Cran or Snarkle, you can make a strength roll, please. And given that it's two of you, let's make that a hard difficulty. Have a crack, Snarkle. Uh, okay. Snarkle puts um, a little bit of his weight behind it. And after a little bit of resistance, there's a <laughs> there's a grinding noise, and then the portcullis shakes free of whatever was holding it up, and it begins to lower. But the weight of it is such that it spins out of Snarkle's hands and comes crashing down onto the sandstone floor with a tremendous uh, iron booming sound which makes the walls shake. You can feel the vibrations through the sand. Can you all make perception rolls, please? What pet seal I had as a boy was stronger than that. Uh, now we can all see things. So as the portcullis slams into the ground and you can feel the ground shake, all of you look out nervously towards the bay, obviously deeply suspicious that there is something that lurks in those blue depths. And sure enough, you can see a serpentine head stick up out of the water, glance at you, and then nimbly plunge back into the water and is lost from sight. But you can't help but notice its long, long and very wide body snakes after it as it goes deeper into the bay. Acor, you probably, you estimate that whatever this creature is, it's probably about 40 feet long and maybe 15 feet wide. Uh, Cran, Ugnan, and Victoria, you got a little bit of a briefing about creatures that live in these waters. Um, this is one of the infamous serpents, aquatic serpents, that infest the seas and the bay around here. Now, they can grow to a prodigious size if fed well, um, to the point that they can threaten shipping. The creature that you've seen is of that sort of size. Don't worry, boys. It's, uh, what's it going to do? Cut through these bars? Now the bars are lower, those bars, you estimate, would probably keep it out. As Cram backs off quite quickly compared with his bravado. Yeah, could the tentacles come through? And then, <laughs> and then come up to the top, which is 40 feet up. <laughs> see? Easy. Uh, so... Let's go and investigate this arena. So I, I think we want to see down. if there's anything, anything underground. Exactly. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any obvious way underground. You can see that there are the steps go all the way around. Uh, Cran, you walk across the sand, crack, 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 whispering in your ears as you walk across. You step up onto the platform, Cran, and um, can you give me another perception roll, please? Can you give me a, uh, da, 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 da. it's going to be an extremely hard perception roll as you step up. Victoria, Ugnan, and Acor hesitate. Um, Acor is eyeing the left and right nervously with his bow at the ready. Ugnan is moving slowly as he's still muttering a spell. Cran, you step slightly up onto the stone floor. And I'm just kind of stamping on it. I'm, I'm seeing yeah, it sounds hot. It's solid. No, it is solid. But as you stamp on it, yeah, it's solid. But it's not It's not part of the bedrock. Boy, boys, this is solid, but it's like... Not solid, part of the not bedrock. Solid. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best crowd could describe it. But it is yeah, that's right. really... It's um so this is clearly manufactured stone and it is um very very regular very smooth though the footing is is secure but it is very curiously perfectly symmetrical and circular. Got to be some way to open this bastard. Cran will go over to the middle throne over there. Right, there's going to be some sort of. But I've seen it, seen it all the time. Like big arenas like this, that one's got all the control buttons on the chair. Levers, you you name it, it'll open it. You watch my words. There are. As you look in, you can see that just in front of the middle chair, you can see what looks like um, a small brass lever. Ooh. Crandall going, fuck me. Never expected that. And then <laughs> step back. Oi, uh, Snuckle, are you ready? I'm going to open it. What, what, what have you seen, warrior? 
uh, I don't know, just a brass lever. Could do anything. Should Although we pull it? Do you think it will? Do you think it will give us treasure? Fucking unlikely, but I think it may give us some right old grief. Oh. But we're looking for somewhere below here, so it's the only solution, I think. Let's pull it. Okay. So you reach in. Hang on, hang on. Uh, no. Let's let's uh, let's get everyone down here first. Okay. Does everybody want to go down onto the sandy floor? No of those strange ripples or anything. No, you can't see anything. As you stare out into the water again, give me another perception roll then, just a regular perception roll, Ugnan. You can see that there are there is a serpent that's swimming around, but it doesn't seem particularly interested in your presence at all. Right, cool. I'm gonna come out, out come away from that area then. Do you want to release your spell? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go down to uh crown then. All right. Acor, are you waiting on high to get an advantage with your bow, or do you want to go down to the floor level? I've I've learnt my lesson after having my ear cut off, and I'm keeping the high ground. <laughs> and the healer right next to me. Well, I'm going to slip him. I'm going to slip. Oh god! I'm going to slip him a uh, uh, drug. I mean, sorry, a herb. <laughs> uh, just another draft because I can see you're still injured. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, and by the way, and you, the Acor to... turns around and says, "What is it with you healers always pushing herbs on us?" <laughs> that was a pretty crap okay. one. Four more hits back. Um, and unfortunately, you've got to roll for four <laughs> addiction factors. It's AF one, but four times. You're good. Well, I'll give you an acupuncture, which is an AF one roll. If you can do that, it's just only a D ten. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one. He keeps the good stuff for himself. Anything over my age, twenty twenty five, and he's all over it. But... Yeah. <laughs> roll for that. Uh, same again, just AF1. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, just AF1. Should be fun. It should be. And that's it. Okay. Unless you want another drug, but I'll probably leave you alone. All right. So, Ugnan and Acor finish having their picnic on the steps. <laughs> um, here, eat this. No, I don't want to eat that. Well, try this tea. Okay, but then you must try this sandwich. Okay, I'll have that sandwich, but you must try this piece of fruit. All right, but only if you have this root. These sandwiches are okay. very Moorish. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so having had your finger food, right. Um, Victoria, you're halfway across the stone circle when Cran leans in with Snarkle watching his back and he depresses the small brass rod. The rod itself is quite tarnished with time. And after a little bit of effort, the rod depresses. You immediately, Victoria, hear a rumbling noise just to your right. And as you look across. (laughs) (laughs) And as you, you, uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Cran, for sharing that with us. And (laughs) as you look across, as you look across, um, Victoria, you can see that that white stone circle is revolving. Oh. Am I the only one seeing this? No, ha- ha- as you pointed out, everybody else can see it as well. That stone circle is just going round and round and round clockwise. Um, is it fairly slowly like going down or up or down? That's no, it's or not just... going down or up. It's just going round and round and round. I'm looking mm. to see if any entrance will open up by going round the other way. It's like waiting for your bag mm. on the luggage carousel. It is, I suppose so, yes. All right, Crank, can you give me a perception roll, please? Okay. There are two doors across to the right-hand side. So there's a door there. Oh, okay. And there's a door there. And they were quite difficult to see because they're quite small. You'd have to duck to go through them. Oh, I wonder what this... Well, it's just rev- revolves. <clears throat> That's bloody stupid. Crank will walk over and look at the doors. <clears throat> Okay. What are you looking at, Warrior? Some doors over here. Look, is it tiny? Does does it go down? The doors know. themselves, um, you can see that the doors themselves are made of iron cran, snarkle. There is a small grill on both doors. And just beyond the doors, you can see some stone steps that descend quite steeply into darkened chambers on the other side. Uh, I think we found a way down. Lads, yes, we, sh- we found a way down over here. Have you tried all the buttons? There's a brass lever. 
I rattled that a bit and that thing started rotating. Fire potter's wheel, but a lot bigger. And it continues to rotate quite slowly, making sort of this low rumbling grinding noise. Yeah, I was also uh, going to go on top. You can imagine... Okay, you can imagine that standing on it and fighting would, uh, Victoria, you would probably be aware, Ugnan and less so, that standing and fighting on this thing would be quite difficult. This would be quite a challenge if you were certainly hard pressed in combat. Although the floor is moving slowly and moving regularly, the fact that it's rotating after a while would certainly make fighting quite difficult. So perhaps this was there. Just for to add to the entertainment. Yeah. Acor, can you give me a perception roll, please, as you move around the stone steps that form the seating area? Okay, thank you very much. From oh. time to time, Acor, you can hear the distant noise of something large splashing in the bay beyond the rocky outcrop that you're on, but nothing rears up to threaten you at all you can certainly hear more distant uh, more quietly than the others because of your distance the rumbling of that central stone wheel cran and snarkle uh both doors are iron rusted and padlocked Fuck, Jerry's back. who's got who's got the lock picking skills in this party yeah don't worry Cran like reaches into his pack and gets out a really battered old crowbar. Uh, oh, I can, have, I can have a go. I can have a go. <laughs> oh, come on then. I've been... You're not quite yeah, as right, attractive like bend, bending over a lock as Cherry was, but. Uh... Oh, you're not entertained. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, you're going to have a go at the one on the left, first of all. Right, the I lock itself sh- is quite old and. There's a risk that because of its age, it's going to it's going to eat your lock picks. So unless you're quite careful, you could eat up a lot of lock picks because this mechanism is quite stiff. Um, Ugnan. Yeah, he's not very so, good. So I'm going to try it once. Kind of just get the oily oily rag out of his backpack and just like start polishing Betty while he's watching Ugnan struggling. In <laughs> okay, so give me a very hard lock pick roll, please. Sorry, an extremely hard lock pick roll, please. Yeah, he's not going to bother because he's not got that level of skill. He's got plus twenty three. So once he realizes how hard it is, he goes, "Oh, oh no, sorry, yeah. Ed, it's beyond me." Anybody else fancy having a go at picking locks if they've got lock picking skills? I you have pick lock. His... You, you do have pick shoes. lock. Yeah, but I don't have the lock picks to do it. You so could picked... borrow some from from Ugnan, who clearly has some picks. Do you want to have a go? Yeah, just one go. Okay. I like this one. Don't don't break it. Here you go. <laughs> okay, so extremely hard then, please. Extremely hard. Oh, sure. Nope. But you don't break the lock picks. No, I mean, this is as you fiddle with the lock, Victoria, you realize that this is going to be really hard. You don't have the tools, you don't have the quality picks, and you just don't have the skill of knowing exactly how hard you can force a pick before it snaps. You can feel the lock pick itself or the pick, sorry, bend and flex. And you just don't have the experience to know how how hard you can force things. So you decide to err on the on on the cautious, and you shrug and nod to Cran, who's got Betty in both hands. Yeah, go for it. Cran's got he's got a big toothy grin, and you see how like he hasn't brushed his teeth for probably four weeks. There's like bits of like jerky stuck in them. It doesn't look very pleasant at all. And then he um he walks over and jams the flatter end in wedges it behind a bit of the door and then tries to break the padlock open. Yeah, off you go. So just give me a... You can give me a light strength roll, please. Can I let it start on my foot? Almost. Have another go. Oh, fuck. I'll throw, the, I'll throw it down in the sand and walk off to the other side of the arena. Someone else have a go. Okay. Yeah, I'll have a go. All right. Victoria picks up Betty. <gasps> has a go. Touching Betty. Uh, just uh, strength roll. Yeah. yeah, strength, but it's uh, light, so you can give him oh, a plus that. 10 bonus, yeah. 
I mean, this this is was not designed to hold up against. <laughs> well, it was designed to hold up against um, crowbars, but you're still struggling with it. Have another go. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're weakening it. No. No. Nope. Snarkle, do you want to have a go next? <laughs> Yes, let me have a go. Uh, what is what is that? A crowbar? That's not yeah. just any crowbar. That's Betty. Betty, what is a Betty? It's a magic Tra crowbar. Some songs about it called Sweaty Betty, but that's a whole different. Story. No, there aren't. Stop <laughs> it. Almost, you felt it creak and go. Have another roll. I'm going to make it now an easy. Cut two of you get on that. Yeah, I'm just watching. I'm, I, I didn't limber up. You can see Cran stretching a little bit. There you go. Um, and then it, yeah, there is that with a crack, the padlock flies off the door. The door shudders slightly. And you can see, obviously, by the way it flexes and moves, that it's designed to open um, towards you. Who's opening the door and stepping in to whatever lies beyond? That would be me. Want me to lead? Off you, oh, lads. Yeah. Okay. Let me just do that. And let me give you a little bit more of the stone. So slightly beyond the door, I've not obviously put the um, steps on this. You can see a small chamber. So Snarkle, you step in. Cran, you're not too far behind. <clears throat> Acor is further back with his bow. Victoria, you're probably right by the door as well. And Ugnan, you're not too far back either. You're probably somewhere by about there. Okay. So, so lads, I got I got a nasty feeling there is some fucking ancient undead knight in here, and he wants us to reunite his soul so he can finally die in peace. And I did promise him that. Why are well, you only telling us this now? Once we leave this it's, place, if it starts going to shit, then obviously jump in and get my back. But uh, I want to give him a, like a good shot first. Give him his best okay. shot, and if. How and why did you make this promise? <laughs> yes. Well, I was, I was what were you thinking? Then, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> a, bit more, uh, a bit more reckless than I am now. But uh, I got, I got a pretty good uh, ad on things. I think we'd be all right. So the small cell that you can see seems to be completely bare, except for an unusually large set of iron shackles that are attached to the far wall snarkle. And there are two sets of these, one slightly towards the left and one towards the right. As you step into the room, the shackles shake slightly and reach out towards you, straining on the chains. Other than that, the plain sort of brick floor, which is dusty, seems to be empty of furniture or adornment. The shackles Seems... continue, wrist shackles, <clears throat> continue to reach out towards you. Keep, keep draining. Those in, in case there's something that's... in them that's invisible. I think they kept the beasts here before they, they let them into the arena. I think there's nothing in this room. We should try the other room. Okay. Are you stepping out and trying the other chamber? Does anyone else want to have a look in this room? In this, this I'm going to grab... Betty and just like swing it at one of the chains and see if it hits the chain or where I would imagine a hand might be if it was chained to it. Okay, move yourself into the room then, please, Cran. Okay. So, Cran, the nearest one for you to kind of hit is about here. So, the chains come out of that far wall and end in what looks like an iron manacle. So, two chains, two iron manacles where you are, and a further two with iron manacles across to the right. Cran, give me a perception roll, please, as you walk across the floor, clutching Betty in both hands. Okay, thank you. As you come slightly closer, the sh chains slacken slightly, and the shack drop to about, uh, to about waist height. What do you so you're going to have to move closer to hit the shackles or the chains because they've now kind of they're not out at an angle uh, they're not out at right angles to the wall they've they're slack they're they're drooping slightly do you want to step closer no I'm assuming it's going to lash out at me if I get any closer so 
uh, he'll kind of crouch down on one knee and just prod the chains, but keeping out of where we think he could swing to with the. Um, okay. In case it what, are out you, his head. what are you prodding the chains with? Uh, just with Betty. With Betty? Yeah. Okay. You reach out and very gingerly, you're going to have to reach quite a long way. You reach out and gingerly touch the shackle and where the shackle, the manacle, sorry, the wrist manacle joins the chain and just tap it with Betty. And suddenly something snatches Becky, uh, Betty, sorry, and rips it out of your hands. And you can see that the chains now, the wrist manacles come slightly together. And Betty is supported in midair. Come to Nick Betty. Oi, give it back. Nothing happens. In fact, if anything, the chains on the far wall uh, towards the northeast, they now straighten and begin to reach towards you, but you're some distance from them. The I'm manacles gonna... and chains nearest you now actually retreat back towards the wall, so holding Crab Betty wall out in front of you. With comic... Um comic timing you'd only see in a pantomime cran will look to uh his new comrade wink and then kind of gradually back up a bit and then make a sudden lunge for betty and try and rip it free <laughs> <laughs> okay right what are you doing you bloody idiot okay. fuckers nick me crowbar me i'll get it for you come here <laughs> cran's uh... spending more effort getting his crowbar back than he did silk <laughs> okay cran you reach out to get betty no, no, this wasn't a reach out. This was a very subtle cherry-like sleight of hand maneuver. Okay, this is a snatch. Free. A snatch okay. and grab, exactly. Okay, so Betty lashes out at you and catches you full across the face, uh, smacking you across the jaw and chin for 10 points of damage and an A crush critical. The hand pot, pot helms wood, useless. wielding these. Yes. Well, it's across the jaw. Ooh, that's 60. That gives you another five hit points and, um, I suppose, rings your bell. So you are stunned and a bit dazed as Betty crashes into your jaw. Cranor will like, collapse. He'll fall back down on his ass and then sit there looking at it for a bit. Get out of there, you bloody idiot. I can't. That's our lock picking kit. It's like held up on the wall now. I, I, I can get it out for you. Can I? Can I loose okay. my arrow? It's sort of just above uh, Betty. Yes, you can. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to make your attack roll and take away fifty, please, Acor. And I'll I'll take care of the rest. So your arrow flies past. So you'd probably have to step to the doorway, something like that. Uh, you fire your arrow, which flies past Cran, hits something just above Betty and stays there. And then you can see it begin to almost melt. Betty, however, um, you can see falls as if one of the ha one hand, one invisible hand is let go before it's grasped again. Fortunately, Cran has stepped out of range of the chains and can't be reached. Cran gets up, grabs his jaw a bit and like, wiggles it left and right. Oh, fuck, things are grinding around. And then he's um, going to take his uh, trusty old axe out. He's not going to use a sword for this job and um, get the shield off his back and gingerly go forwards and take an enormous arcing swing where he would imagine, based on where Betty is, a protagonist neck and chest area would be all right i'm gonna put a token on the board just to make this easier there you go right let's let's have a crack at that with the uh with the battle axe so he's got a shield up he's uh kind of swinging it in a an arcing horizontal loop chest yeah. guy so just give yeah I can, I can do the rest okay so i didn't apply minus 50 i'm afraid but god it feels good having this back in hand Sword's nice, but not as well balanced as this axe. The axe hits something, and you can you can feel the shudder as it as it crunches into the creature. This is your regular battle axe, isn't it? It is magical, but it's regular, yeah. Yeah, okay. Can you give me 
a slash critical role, please. Okay, thank you. The axe thumps into something, Cran, and you can see that Betty and the chains go slack. And then you can see that whatever is holding Betty has now gone to the wall and Betty is being prized and pulled against the chains on the wall. You've obviously you, you, suspect, you suspect that you've now given this creature the exactly the tool it needs to break the chains that have held it to the wall. Right, I'm going <laughs> ballistic. It's using my weapon against me. That is not on. Okay. Uh let me just reset these through round one. Can you give me some initiative rolls, please, everybody? Uh Agnan, lads! Oof. I bloody told you. <laughs> that's a that's a nice ass initiative there, Victoria. Yeah. Oh yeah. Max. Yeah, Max. So the manacles on the other side of the wall um start reaching out towards you as a as a party, but obviously they are too far away to get at you. Um with a crunch, one of the manacles and sorry, one of the chains linked to a manacle comes away from the wall. And lashes out at you, Cran, in a whip-like motion, but misses comfortably. Obviously, these whips or these these chains were never meant to be used properly as whips. And it really just catches you, sort of a glancing blow across the thigh for um, sort of a heavy bruise, but little more than that. But one of the creature's arms is now free. Victoria, your turn. So I would like to uh, draw my uh, scythe. And step into the room if I can squeeze by. Yes, you can. Make my okay. way up to the creature. Right. Okay. As you swing remorse at this invisible creature, remorse is struggling. It's trying Ooh. not to hit. So can you make your attack roll? But I want you to make it at minus 50, please. Wow. With great force of will more than anything else. And gritting your teeth, you manage to persuade, I suppose, remorse to make one strike. So that's uh, 12 points of damage. And can you give me a, a slash critical, please? C slash critical. Thank you very much. Obviously, you can't see what happens to this creature, but you can feel the blade do something. And now can you roll me um, an A heat critical, please? Hmm. Oh, 67. Remorse is a great weapon, apart from the fact that you have to have all these extra tables open, which means you lose even more real estate. Yeah. Um, yeah. There we go. Okay, thank you. Three and now tables. your second attack, please. Yeah. <sighs> so remorse in your hands is very unwieldy and is almost fighting to not hit whatever you are trying to hit for whatever reason. Ugnan, it's your turn. You're outside. You can hear the grunt of effort as Victoria engages. So as he's looking on, it, can he see all the other... How many sets of chains are in there? So there's two pairs. One pair is wielding Betty. Yep. And has freed one of the chains from the wall. The other set of chains towards the northeast is still firmly fixed to the wall and reaching out at right angles from the wall towards Victoria. But there's some way short by about sort of six to eight feet short. And those are the, the only set of chains that move, just those two pairs? Yep. Okay, he can start preparing a spell then. Okay. Cram, you're free to act, I think. What the fuck is that thing? It's going to go absolute gangbusters at it. It's just going to swing wildly with a big overhead. Now you see it. Okay, that's 38 points. That's an E slash critical, please. Be invisible, but you were bloody boring if you think you can beat us tied up with a chain and my own crowbar. Ah, oh, darn it. Okay. A measly critical. <laughs> uh, 31. Snarkle, it's your turn. Okay. The Snarkle, looking pretty disgusted, wields his battle axe and hits the invisible creature, hopefully. Okay. You take a great swing and then almost fall off your feet as the axe 
goes straight through where the creature should be. You should have hit it because you can see where Cran landed a hefty blow and you saw where his weapon stopped and shuddered to a halt. And you can see where remorse with difficulty slammed into the creature. Your axe, though, just whistles through the creature as if it's not there at all, like smoke. Why is he doing that? What's happening? Give me my crowbar back now! Can I launch another arrow and then let fly? You next? can. You're f- oh, you fired last I'm... round, though, didn't you? You fired last round, so you're going to have to have a round to load, and then you can fire next round. Yeah, that's cool. Right, let's have some initiative rolls, please. So this creature takes the opportunity to free itself from its last constraint, but is still here. And it will lash out with one of the chains that it's freed at you again, Cran. That Can whip attack missed, missed you anyway, so it sort All of right. slammed against your shield as you knocked it away. Right. However, what you also notice alarmingly is Betty neatly cartwheels through the air and is grabbed by one of the other manacles. That's why I'm still bastard. Ugnan. Second round of prep. Okay. Cran. So you're attacking an invisible creature, which is minus 20, please. I'm going to give you. I only want my fucking crowbar back. (laughs) 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 Right, hold that. Keep going. Oh, balls. Oh, that 90 was there. Almost had it. Down to a measly 38. 22 points. You can see both chains slump to the Quick, get the other bastard! As I pull my axe out of its sternum. So hang on, did it throw Betty across the other the other set of manacles? Y- yeah, yes. it's being held by another set of manacles. And here was me thinking that this these two creatures would be no threat to you at all because <laughs> they can't from the wall. We can make any we can make anything a threat if you give them a crowbar to leave them. <laughs> Especially mm. Betty. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that is now demon tainted. Victoria, um, I'm going to put the other invisible creature on the map just so that you can see it. Yeah, I can only see like uh, Betty floating in there. So you can see, I mean, you've, you've probably got a good idea of what's going on, that there are some creatures that are invisible that are using Betty to free themselves. Yeah. Betty is now being held by one of the other manacles, and you can see Betty now is being used against uh, where the chain joins the wall. I'm going to make my way over and try and attack it. Oof, 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 oof. Come on, yes, please! Oh, <laughs> wow. oh, holy that crap. Nice. Oh, that's, uh, okay. What was the really last attack that was three? Four, opening? three, four, because I just edited it this week. Yeah, nice really? Thing. Wow. And nice was that Victoria? Uh, yeah, it was Victoria as well. Oh my gosh, yeah. you were lucky. Good job. So you've maxed out at 22 points and an E slash on this creature. The E slash is 37. Just to emphasize, though, that would have been another over 400 if you hadn't had the thing fighting all the way. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it didn't have, so, yeah. And oh, yeah. obviously you've then got the, was that a, a, an A heat critical? Yeah. Okay, so then give me an A heat critical. Yeah. Uh, right, thank you. And... Awesome. Can you make your second attack, please? Yes. No. That misses, I'm afraid. Yep. Okay. Great goal. Yeah, nice one. Acor, you can fire at the second creature. Just take a minus 20 penalty to hit, please. Okie dokie. Two seconds. Minus 20. Yep. So there's only one uh, one of your friends fighting, so I'm not going to give you a penalty for firing into melee. But the creature is invisible, obviously. But it's confined. So your arrow flies true, thumps into the creature. And then again, you notice that your arrow stays as if it's embedded itself in a target and then blackens, withers, the warp cracks, and the arrow falls to pieces. Snarkle, your turn. Um, Snarkle's still trying to figure out whether there was something about his battle axe or him that caused him to just so blatantly fail in the last round 
he's going to use his battle axe to attack invisible creature to get it. Gang, with a mighty blow, you brace your feet and sweep the axe up from what would be groin to chin and almost lift yourself up off your feet and topple over backwards as the axe just passes through whatever is there um, as if it was made of smoke. Your axe, regrettably, seems incapable of hitting whatever these foul things are. Initiative rolls, please, folks. So the creature lashes out with one chain at you, Victoria. Yep. Wow, they're really rubbish. Misses. In fact, fumbles the chain. <coughs> okay. We right. fumble Betty and we'll leave it alone. All right. Well, it's used Betty to release the other chain and drops Betty to the floor. Oh, thanks. Victoria. If you fucking bent it, you'll be in real trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to attack it. Of course. Uh, here so we go. Just minus 20, please. Yep. Uh, miss. Damn it. Second attack. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> I'm second, rolling shit. <laughs> second attack rolls. You shouldn't have used up all those big rolls. Yeah. Ugman, yeah, it's did. your turn. So the chains are free now, are they? Yes. One set of chains lies on the floor, motionless, as if whatever was held by them has been defeated. The other sets of chains are now whipping around in the air, being used as hideously oversized flails. Okay, so it looks like it's got itself free from the chains, I'm, I'm surmising. Yeah, afraid so. Okay, he's going to pull shut the, the door. Sorry, I can't let it get out. Are you going to shut the others inside? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's okay. it, Agnid succumbed to his goddess voice. <laughs> TPK time. Okay. Oh, well, morons. Well, yeah. it, it's funny you say that. <laughs> As you close the door... You can hear that little voice quietly at the back of your head chuckling. Because after all, you have the portal rod. You know where the Ashling Stone is. If you ask very nicely, Orgiana will tell you where the other portal rod is. I'm going to try and close it. I don't know if I've got the strength, but I'll try. Oh, no, you can. Oh, no, no, no. With with. Strength that comes from somewhere. No, you can close the door. No, I don't want that. Strength. You want to wedge it. No, basically, I, uh, Uglin blames her for letting Silk go because remember he asked for her help and she basically blanked him. So he's not even thinking about her. He's never going to mention her name again. He, to, her, to him, she's dead. Not thinking about who? That name. <laughs> okay, all right. It's never, he's never, he's, he's, he's been the same words. films that I have. Yeah, he's, okay. He's never going to mention that name, so you've got to pull down all right. if you can the, the, the okay. door. It's slightly philosophical thing. I think it's impossible to not think about something, isn't it? But anyway, okay, so you you can close the door and kind of put a foot against it, knowing that if obviously if the party want to come out, they can get out. But you can feel that temptation of, well, do you really need them? Yeah, yeah, and but, and you yeah. can feel Orgada say, "Look, I'm not judging you. I'm just saying, you know, do do you need them? How no, helpful he, to you are they?" He is okay. trying his best to ignore any voices in his head. Sorry, I just can't let this <laughs> thing get out. Bloody get it. Okay, all right. So very sensibly, uh, Ugnan takes precautions not to release an invisible creature to roam the city after you. Cran, so, Betty is um, there on the floor. If you want to retrieve her. Do we have any idea where the uh, where this creature is in the room now? Is it still there? Or based like... on yeah, based on where Snarkle was, and based on where Victoria was. Yes, you've got an idea. You are still fighting blind, so it's a minus twenty penalty. Keep, but the keep in the corner, had... guys. But the creature, yeah. So I'm only going to give you a minus twenty penalty because you know roughly where in the room it is. Off you go. All right. So it's going to give it a right old thumping. Oh no. Oh, oh you! That was, this is so good. That that was too off a critical. <laughs> <laughs> too off a fumble. Sorry. Uh, so that won't is. Be uh, it is actually. It's five points, and an A crush critical. So it's fumble or critical. There's no in between now. I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so... God, I haven't I haven't used this axe for ages. <laughs> Seems a bit light compared with the sword. Acor, you can. So you hear the door clang behind you and Ugnan's voice sorry but I can't 
what do you want to do? Do you want to calmly load or do you want to get out? Um, You're in a small yeah. room with an invisible creature that you can't hit and Snarkle can't hit. Yeah, so I think, much like the crystal maze, I'm just going to knock on the door uh, for <laughs> Ugnan to, to, to let me out. <laughs> okay. Ugnan. Because I can do a lock in the situation. Okay, Ugnan, are you letting him out? Yes. Okay. Snarkle. Uh, sorry, Acor retreats. Snarkle. Can, can, can we hear this creature? Give me an extremely hard perception roll. The creature is aware that it's invisible and aware that that's an asset and is trying to be quiet, but it is moving across the floor. In the midst of combat, you listen for a telltale swish of taloned feet on what is a dusty stone floor. Oh, no. You've got no idea of where the creature's moving, so you pause, but you can't hear anything above Cran's expletive as... Um, he almost misses with his battle axe. And Victoria cursing the blade that she's trying to wield. The two of them are making too much noise for you to hear. You can still make an attack. It's going to be at minus 20. But of course, you realise now that your axe just seems to be as much use as a knife cutting smoke. OK, I'm just going to attack. And the grain, a great blow that sweeps across the floor almost topples you into Cran as you swing from left to right and your blade just doesn't meet any resistance at all. And the weight of the axe, even though you're a sturdy and well-built um, axeman, almost takes you off your feet. Your axe should be thumping home with every single blow, but this creature seems to be immune to your weapon. Okay, e initiative yes. rolls, please. I like it, Cran. I'm wasting those rolls, though, Ooh. on initiative. <laughs> I'm still going to come behind it. You're number one okay. now. And the PCs. Look at that. So the creature lashes out with one set of chains at you, Cran. Okay, so you just take two points of damage from one of the chain attacks. The creature, however, with two chains at its disposal, is able to make an attack on you, Victoria. You take five points of damage. Cran, it's your turn. I stop wriggling around you. Invisible bastard, and he'll uh, give it two handers with the uh, with the axe. That's a bit better. Nice. Two, three, three. Okay, thirty-eight points of damage, and that's an E slash critical. Right, I'm going to put a bit of clockwise curl on the dice this time. You watch these great rolls. Ah, oh, twenty-seven, mm -hmm. amazing! Uh, I mm -hmm. should have gone. Should have gone counterclockwise. It's yeah. true, Lou. You put a little English on it; it changes the die. Yeah, it could be it twenty-six. Does, it, gets... <laughs> it could okay. have been seventeen or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Ugnan, you stand outside with uh, Acor as this fight continues to rage. Going to close the door again. Okay. I think that's probably. Oh, door. <laughs> Acor, you're outside. Do you want to load just in case? Although you too, like Snarkle, are aware that your arrows, although they're flying true, just don't seem to be doing anything at all. Um, in fact, they're actually, withering I'll, away. I will put my bow away and draw my knife uh, and sort of casually ask Ogman if he's got any more herbs. <laughs> I've got loads. What do you want? <laughs> What's your poison? Okay. <laughs> uh, Victoria for some reason remorse does not want to hit these creatures mm -hmm. and that's a miss come on give me one good hit eh nope nope remorse will not hit snarkle your axe is just not capable of hitting this creature at all what do you want yeah, to do yeah I just I, I can't be bothered I'm not going to try this time. Snarkle moves away. Okay, so Snarkle retreats, aware that his blade is of no use at all. Okay, uh, initiative rolls, please. What what um axe oh, does Snarkle have? Yeah, you want you yeah. want the magic web or two? Hang on a minute. Bad axe, no magic. Yeah, <laughs> I mean I have a warhammer I can use, but it's a warhammer. Okay. Oh, God, wait. I think I left all those magic items on the ship. Uh, Two ended swords, sorted with mercury in them, all sorts. Right, that's what we do next. We get him sorted. Yeah. Okay. 
So what you're aware of next, uh, who would you go for? I think you'd go for you, um, Cran. Is two great hands solidify right in front of your face and try and grab your head and crush it. Waste of time. Um, yes, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's absolutely solid all the way through. Yeah, the original pinhead barbarian. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Cran, the both hands, as you rear back, grab you around the neck instead. That's 14 points of damage as they really sort of punch you in the larynx. And that's a B critical. <coughs> and the B is an 81. Eesh. Luckily, I've got so full plate armor on. So that's another 12 hit points. And you're stunned and unable to parry for two rounds. Uh, this thing's like an invisible fucking Shana. <laughs> <laughs> one one for the old guys there. Your turn. Minus 50, please. And yep. Morse continues to fight a little bit better. Three points of damage. Uh, second attack, please, but not a critical. Um, that's slightly better. That's four points of damage, but no criticals, I'm afraid. Wow. You really yep. like remorse, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ugnan. Come on, I chained the creatures up for... Oh, yeah, and then you gave it a... Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ugnan, your turn. Uh, he's going to open the door and go in once he sees the, the telltale signs of Cran looking a bit un unsteady on his feet. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Okay. So I don't know how far I can get in. What we'll do. Whatever. Okay. Uh, you can get into about there, I suppose. Acor, okay. Ugnan now opens the door and goes in. Do you want to close the door behind them and keep this invisible creature inside, or do you want to leave the door open? Uh, I think I'll, I'll keep the door closed. Okay. Can you give me a channeling resistance roll, please? Anything other than a 10 or lower will be fine. Okay. Obviously, closing the door is keeping a really significant threat well away from you. As long as that door is shut, that invisible creature can't get at you. A wise person would probably securely lock that door. I mean, after all, the padlock is sitting on the floor. The bar and the hook and the latch mechanism are there. But then, of course, your friends would be trapped inside. And you decide just to close the door with your foot. Snarkle. What do you want to do? What do you think we should do? Any plans? Does ask anyone one, have a plan? Ask one of the lads for one of their magic weapons. Anyone got a magic weapon to lend me? Yeah, grab this and I'll throw yeah. the battle axe over and draw a shield breaker. Okay. What's that, John? Is that like your backup? No, backup, backup. This... no, that's my main axe. I just don't... I'm fighting demons at the moment, so I've got to use the demon fighting type blade for that. Okay, uh, so Cran, you're stunned, unable to parry, so you can retreat towards Ugnan if you wish. I do. I kind of back past him and say, uh, oh, fucking hit me in the head. <laughs> and then try and shake it. That's all okay. I'll do. Initiative rolls, please, folks. All right. The door is being pushed against Acor. Can Ooh. you give me a strength roll, please, as this creature tries to force its way out? You need to get higher than 102, otherwise it's got out. Oh, no. Okay, Sorry, you are no. flung back as the creature stands in the doorway, pushing its way out. Uh, Ugnan, your turn. Ooh, okay, he's going to sprint out and try and tackle the creature. Okay. We, we know where it is now. Uh, well, it's invisible. So, Ugnan, you sprint out. And bounce back as you hit the creature. Okay. So you hit it. So give me a strength roll, Ugnan. Um, I mean, there is a chance that if you beat it on a strength roll, you sort of knock it to the floor. Uh, no. However, you are aware that it's in the doorway, which you can call out to the others. Victoria, it's your turn. It's in the bloody doorway. It's in the doorway. So you're still only at minus 50 to hit it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go. Yeah. Miss. Yeah. Next attack. And that does 10 points of damage. You do a B critical with it, please. Ooh. 
90 oh that gosh. is enough to drop it to the ground. You've managed to kill it. Nice. Go. So your blade meets resistance, and then you can see the chains that have dragged across the floor with it fall to the floor. Crown will wobbly get to his feet and sullenly walk over and quietly pick up Betty and put it in his backpack and then turn around and walk out the door, <laughs> grumbling under his breath. And that's where we'll leave this episode. Next episode, we'll carry on looking for that elusive last artifact. Thanks very much for watching, listening, subscribing, all that usual stuff. Happy gaming. Cheers. <laughs>